What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Around the Mission. And today, I am happy to be joined by Michael Walton, who is the Executive Director of the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation. Welcome, Michael. Thank you very much, Patrick. Now, um, that's a big... It's a big, mouthful. It is. It's a mouthful. <laughs> there we go. So, um, why don't we go ahead and, and tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got involved with the Foundation. Absolutely. So, um, the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation was established in 1995. Um, I had just moved to the area, but I actually had met the founding president of the Community Foundation in Key West, Florida, where I was the director of the Texaco Key West Challenge Fishing Tournament, and Doug Roach was a Texaco wholesaler at the time, right. and he and Scott and Steve would come down and fish in the tournament. Okay. Um, so I, when my wife and I bought a little farm on Tillhands Creek over in the western part of Berkeley County, I saw that um, Doug was going to be at the tournament. I saw that he was from Martinsburg, and I introduced myself to okay. him when he was in Key West, and we became friends. Um, we did a... a couple of things together over the years. Um, they would come down and fish in the tournament. I continued to run the tournament even after we moved up here. Um, but then the uh, I remember very clearly when the first donor created the first fund at the Community Foundation. I read about it in the journal. A fellow named George Hancock wanted to establish a scholarship in memory of his wife, Holly Woods Hancock. And he had a hundred thousand dollars CD at one of the local banks that back then was paying seven percent mm -hmm. or something. So um, he transitioned that over to a fund at the Community Foundation, and that was the beginning. Um, and Doug was the president for six years. It was all volunteers in those first um, six years, and I started to uh, help. Uh, I served on one of their committees, probably beginning in. 2000, I would guess, maybe 2001, um, served on the, it would have been the PR committee at the time. Uh, shortly after that, they hired a part-time executive director, a woman named Amy Owen, who was remarkable, especially because she figured out a way to get foundation support to pay for her salary. So wow. the, the Benedim Foundation, um, <laughs> came on board as one of the early supporters of the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation. They gave us a grant to um, pay Amy's two-day-a-week salary, mm -hmm. and they continued to support that position for three years, and then they gave another grant to support her full-time. Wow, okay. So when she came full-time, by then I had been serving on the board here for a few years, um, she came full-time here, and there was a small startup community foundation down in Winchester called the Community Foundation of the Northern Shenandoah Valley. Um, I applied for the job there because I just really loved what community foundations do. And, and for your listeners, if you're not familiar with the community foundation in your area, by all means you should be. There are 800 community foundations that serve um, communities throughout the United States. And there are others across the world, but in the United States, there's 800. They each serve their own geographic region, and ours is Jefferson, Berkeley, Morgan, Hampshire, and Hardy. Okay. So this community foundation, which started in 1995, is now almost 25 years old. The one that I worked at in Winchester first, I worked there from 2005 to about 2011. Um, it was a tiny one, it just getting started. So that was a real learning experience for me. And when Amy Owen moved in 2012, um, they put out a, a request for applications, and mm -hmm. I was one of 43 people who applied. Well, so there was a lot of interest in, yeah. yeah. <laughs> fortunately, I got an interview, and I was able to get the job and fill Amy Owen's big shoes, because <laughs> she did a remarkable, uh, remarkable job for the Community Foundation. Awesome. Now, one question before we go, is the fishing tournament still going on? Fishing tournament is, believe it or not, <laughs> still going on, and that is an unusual thing for a charity tournament to be, um, it, it started in 1989. I was involved with it um, from 1990 to 2007. Okay. 
and it's still go it's still uh, operating it actually uh, when uh, there was a transition shell bought out Texaco and it's now the shell Key West Channel. okay um, and the fellow that I worked for down there was also a wholesaler like uh, Mr. Roach. Mm -hmm. um, his name was Hayden Blaylock and he was a great guy. Like uh, Doug Roach, he was one of these very active community leaders. Awesome. And um, so I think we raised over two million dollars for a couple of different charities. That very happened. nice. Yes, very so that nice. was a good group to work with. So, if, so we're talking about a community foundation and I'm sure there's someone out there watching the video or listening to the show going, what is a community foundation? So kind of in a nutshell, what is it that the community foundation does? So we work with donors who want to create endowed funds so that they can continue to support favorite charities, nonprofit organizations, causes in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has been giving the rescue mission a thousand dollars a year and they know that they're not going to live forever, they want to plan ahead. They may create a legacy gift that would give the community foundation um, $20,000. Uh, we invest that money. And from the gains of the investments, we would make uh, roughly 5%, $1,000 grant every year okay. to the rescue mission or to any organization. We have one endowed fund that was established by John Wharton, and it serves eight different nonprofit organizations each quarter. Um, the rescue mission is one of the eight, gets about $950 per quarter from that fund. Mm -hmm. So getting just under $4,000 a year from that fund. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, set up in a way that he would be able to continue to support his favorite charities. Okay. And if, and if someone wanted to do this, what's the process? If somebody says, hey, I got some money that I would like to leave to this, how do they go about it? They, we always say they should talk to their uh, state attorney or uh, financial advisor, but they can get started by coming to us and we can sit down and draft up what we call a shell agreement. It gives us instructions on what they really want to accomplish with their gift at the end of their life. Mm -hmm. And we also work with donors who want to uh, give us something immediately. So we have uh, donors who create funds, fund it today, and it starts making grants next year. Okay. And, and I was on your website in looking, and I'll, I'll put the website down here at the end of the video, um, of you, it's not just nonprofits. It's something that jumped out at me is college scholarships. Right. That, we, that really jumped out at me with this school starting and stuff like yeah, that. So we, we do have scholarships as well, but we, um, you know, we have right now we are awarding just over a hundred thousand dollars in scholarships per year, uh, probably about 115,000 this past year. And it's everything from somebody who's going to study to become a veterinarian to um, somebody who wants to be a pharmacist to somebody who's going to WVU and has uh, a parent or grandparent who graduated from WVU. So there's all different kinds nice. of scholarships mm -hmm. that have been set up. And it's for a lot of them are uh, available to students from any of the Eastern Panhandle schools. Others are specific to a university that somebody wants to support. We've got one that was established in honor of Dr. T.K. Oates, who was the founder of the City Hospital. Okay. Um, and it is for a nursing student going to Shepherd University. So it's very specific yeah, if you're in this specific. program. And, okay. And, and if they are interested in applying for, like, that scholarship, they just go to your website? Is yep. the forms there? Okay. Yep. The, uh, the, the information about scholarships will be posted the 1st of December okay. this year. We'll get all of the uh, information up, and they have until... Um, the end of February to get the application. Okay. Now, if you're a nonprofit and are interested, is there, it, it, does it have to be somebody just specifically saying, I want this to go here, or is there a grant process? There is also go a through? grant process. Okay. So we have some donors who say, I want to just support um, youth and education programs. Mm -hmm. So we have on October 1st, our grant application will go live for our youth and education programs. And we'll do about a hundred and, it's going to be close to $150,000 in youth and education grants this year. So that's, again, the three eastern panhandle counties of uh, uh, Jefferson, Berkeley, and Morgan. Mm -hmm. And when we do those call for proposals, um, it's a pretty simple application process. It's fill out the 
the application form, and then you have three pages of narratives, and you are told what we want to see on those three pages. We ask you to send us that along with your um, financial report, and if you have an audit, an audit um, okay. from the most recent year. Our grants are relatively small. They're usually uh, $2,000 to $5,000. Um, and we have a lot of organizations that apply for special programs and projects that they couldn't do otherwise if okay. they couldn't get those small grants. And, and you say they're relatively small. And when you're talking in hundreds of thousands of dollars, term that's small, but if, as someone who works for a nonprofit and is, is dependent on that every dime that comes in here, it may seem small to some people, but to someone like in my position, two thousand dollars tremendous help for for what we do here. And so, so it, yeah, it, again, mm -hmm. nonprofits are very good at getting the most use out of the smallest amounts of money. Absolutely, so we're Absolutely. very fortunate to be able to do that. The other thing that we're involved in right now, we have our mini grants to teachers program, and this is one of our favorite um, grant programs because these are really small grants. These mm -hmm. are just up to $500. We'll do $50,000 in many grants this year. And there is no single group of people that you can give $500 to who are more appreciative than teachers. I could not agree more with that they, statement. <laughs> they find the, the most mm -hmm. amazing ways to mm -hmm. use the funds. And, and actually on the cover of our annual report mm -hmm. this year, is a mural that was created by the Warm Springs Intermediate School students over in Berkeley Springs. Oh, wow. It's an upcycling project, and you guys will appreciate this mm -hmm. with all the recycling that you do here. These are all bottle caps and uh, trash bags and all kinds of discarded things that they've created this beautiful underwater mural out of. I will scan, for those of you watching the video, I will scan this and you'll see a picture of yes. this. About, at this point in the video, you'll see a picture of it. If you're only listening, uh, go watch the video if yeah. you want to see it. It's uh. very cool. It's, <laughs> it's actually on display at the uh, Monroe uh, mm -hmm. the Morgan Arts Council uh, Ice House okay. in Berkeley Springs. They've mm -hmm. got it on display there and it's big. It's probably 8 feet by 16 feet maybe. Very nice. Feet. In which school was that? The uh, it's the Warm Springs Intermediate Warm Springs Intermediate, school. okay. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so, somebody donates the money mm -hmm. to, to, to your foundation and says, you know, I, I, like you said, if it's a lifetime gift or an after-death gift or right. something like that, where does the money go once it's donated? When, once somebody writes a check or whatever, where does it go? Well, we have six different local banks okay. that we work with. Each of them has a trust department. Mm -hmm. And so we work with their trust department or their wealth managers mm -hmm. to invest the money. We have an investment committee, and that's one of the big things that we do. We gather the gifts, we grow the gifts by investing them. So we've got an investment policy statement that each of the investment advisors agrees to follow. It gives them guidelines and ranges of different types of investments, but basically it's 65% equities and 35% fixed income investments, so it's well diversified. Okay. And um, we try to return enough so that we can grant 5% annually. Virtually all of our funds, except for the scholarships, we receive 1% of the amount of the fund each year to help cover our expenses okay. at the foundation. And so um, the idea is to grow the funds, to be able to keep up with inflation, to make enough to do 5% distributions each year, and to keep the offices open. And we have um, four people working on staff at the Community Foundation. So we, um, we award roughly a million dollars in grants and scholarships each year. Wow. And we have about $27 million in total assets, mm -hmm. uh, 235 funds that if you get a copy of the annual report and you look at it or you can go online it's online as well you can take a look at it online you can see all of the different funds that we have nice okay and if someone wanted to get involved with the foundation you said you have the, the paid staff obviously but is there any um you know volunteer opportunities or anything like that that they can get involved with there are we have several committees that have um community leaders on it that are not uh, part of our board or part of our staff. Okay. They're just volunteers who serve 
on our grants committee. We have two different grants committee. One does youth and education grants. The other does um, human welfare, okay. uh, social service grants. Mm -hmm. We have a scholarship committee that interviews students and reviews all of the applications for the scholarships. We have uh, an in, uh, investment and uh, finance committee. Mm -hmm. And then we also have board members who often serve on those committees and then rotate through the um, chain of command. We have a, a really good, active 17-member board. Very, very nice. So it sounds like if you are truly interested in doing something with the foundation, you can find a spot for somebody to do something. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's not a, an organization that has hundreds of volunteers, mm -hmm. but we have very active volunteers who are very dedicated to what we're doing. And we're very excited. Um, we're building unrestricted endowment now, and that is to give us the opportunity to be able to respond to the most critical needs in the community. So we've doubled our unrestricted endowment in the last couple of years, and we think we're going to double it again in the next two years as well. So Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, anything you want to add? Anything we haven't covered? Anything you'd like to say? You know, I, I think that I would like to mention uh, again that our founder, Doug Roach, passed away recently. Yes, um, it, it, it's a poorly kept secret that he created an anonymous fund for the uh, Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission. You're correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, you are. It's like, I don't want to get any recognition right. for this, but mm -hmm. that's one of the funds that we have, and we're very proud of what he did for this community and for the Community Foundation as well. He just was a great leader in the area and served on many boards, was a president of the uh, Board of Education for many years, a 50-year member of Rotary, a Paul Harris, multiple Paul Harris fellow with Rotary, and just a, a great guy. You, you are 100% correct. He did, people don't realize the all the fingers he had, all the pies he had fingers in in this, in this community here. And you do bring up something real quick I'd like to touch on. You can donate anonymously. You, you, I mean, his you was can. anonymous, yep. even though, like you said, it was the worst kept secret around. But but you can donate anonymously. As well. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can donate to any of the existing funds, too. It's not mm -hmm. that you have to create your own fund. Right. You can donate to, if we have so many different kinds of funds, and we get uh, donors who will give us a gift and say, okay, I'd like you to split it uh, among these five funds. Okay. And they'll just tell us where they want the money to go. And that helps us grow all of the endowments, whether it's for a specific agency or for a field of interest or a designated fund. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Matt. Thank you for taking the time to come on and, 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 and talk about this because I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't even know this exists. Yeah. And, and that's what, what I really we're do, to do want to mention, Patrick, is if you live somewhere else, there is a community foundation that serves you. Almost every area in the United States mm -hmm. has a really good community foundation, and I encourage you to find out about them um, because they really are doing a lot of good work, and a lot of times they're, they're not well-known in the community because they are small. Um, they're kind of working with other nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. We have so many nonprofits that we work with, and in, in virtually every community in the United States, that same thing is happening um, with the nonprofits there as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michael. If you are interested in finding out more information, like I said, our, the, the um, uh, website will be on the, has should have been on the bottom of the screen this whole time in the video. And if you're interested in learning more about what we do here at the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, you can visit our website at martinsburgunionrescuemission.com. There's a donate button on there. Every little bit helps, like we talked about here. There is no such thing as a small amount. Every little bit helps. And also our Amazon wish list is on there for the ongoing needs of the mission as well. Thank you so much, Michael. Thanks Thank for joining you. us today. Have a great day, everybody.